So we're going to test out today how machine learning works in real life. And we're going to do that through what's called the herding inequality. Now, before writing down the formula or the inequality, let's list the inequality's highlight points. The first one is a variable called nu. Nu is going to be the fraction of the input space. Our second property is mu. Mu is the actual probability that we have within our input space. We could define the input space as capital X. We have epsilon which defines the tolerance that we have, that the difference between nu and mu are small. So the greater the tolerance that we have, the more stringent we're making our um, evaluation. And to compensate for that stringentness, to maintain the overall in, um, trait of maintaining probability, we have to include a big N. And N is me the number of the sample size of our data that we can test off of. So we could write down the formula inequality as the absolute value of nu minus mu is greater than epsilon less than or equal to 2e minus epsilon squared m. Now what does this all mean? It means that the probability that the difference of mu minus mu is greater than epsilon is equivalent to the number or the the size of our data set that we are providing to our learning model, which can be defined as the algorithm and the hypothesis set. So this is like the overall property, the herding inequality that really allows machine learning to be applied to real life applications. And why I say that is because when you take anything into real life applications, when you want to evaluate something, it's always in terms of probability. You know, in an ideal world, whenever you put in a, um, an input, you always get, or you'll always map to um, an exact output through a function or a linear transformation. But in real life, that may not be the case. It is an issue of probability or how many times that given input will actually map out to our expected output. We have a desired probability, which is just a function of nu, mu, epsilon, and n. And to increase our probability, robustness, we can always increase our n, our sample size, and we could always decrease our epsilon or make our, um, our requirements less stringent. And how I want to illustrate this is through a coin analogy. Now we all know that the probability that, you're, that you'll get heads is 50. 50 out of 50 out of the choice of both heads and tails. But let's just say that you flipped a coin five times. Sometimes you hit three heads and two tails. Sometimes you may get five heads and no tails and dot, dot, dot. You'll notice that for each individual trial, 
we never actually get the probability or mu, the real probability of real life within any given instance that, that we listed. But if we flip the coin five times infinitely, assuming that we have no time restriction, then we'll eventually get close to the probability of 50-50. But the thing is, is that unlimited time is assuming that we'll never actually get there. So we'll never actually come to that final conclusion of the original target probability of 50-50. And that's why through the herding inequality that machine learning holds, it's because that we could always increase our probability that the difference between nu and mu will be small or small relative to our tolerance that we chose, given if we have a very large sample size n. 